Hey guys, welcome back to Southern Drizzle. Today, we are going to be making some red velvet cupcakes. Here are all the ingredients for the cake and here are the ingredients for the frosting. Let's not waste any time, let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna start with two cups of all-purpose flour, two heaping tablespoons of cocoa, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of baking powder, and mix it well. Mix it up, use that wrist, keep it moving. Keep it, you see, th there we go. Now we're gonna start our wet ingredients with two cups of sugar, one cup of oil. I use vegetable oil, but you can use any type of oil that you have. I just used this because it was in my cabinet. And we want to mix, blend together. Once it's together, we're gonna add our two large eggies. Yes, eggies. And then blend that. As it's blending, add one cup of buttermilk. Please be sure that everything is at room temperature, guys. You want your eggs and your buttermilk both at room temperature. Mix it together. While it's mixing, I add my red food coloring, which is the whole bottle. <laughs> one teaspoon of vanilla, and also one teaspoon of white vinegar. And lastly, my coffee. This is the most important ingredient, guys, because it makes all of your chocolate cakes so moist. And for this, you don't have to put plain coffee. Get creative. There's so many different types of coffee you can put in. My personal favorite is hazelnut. Okay, so we're gonna mix the dry ingredients now. And I also like to have this because I do not want a big flour cloud poof when I start my mixer. So I always like to break my dry ingredient in half. Once you mix everything together, the batter will be thin. So don't be concerned. Don't think you put too much of something in it. No, it's good. This is how it's supposed to look. It's gonna be some thin batter, but it's okay gonna be great get your cups ready for your holder and you want to fill your cups only halfway through if you go two-thirds it's gonna be too much you want to bake at 325 for 15 to 17 minutes and look I overfilled it look at those big old muffins look at them. oh gosh disregard that one thing I want you to look at here is your toothpick will not be clean. And it's okay because you're going to keep those cupcakes in that holder for at least five minutes to continue cooking. Then take them out to completely cool, which they will look something like this. Look at that cake. So I'm going to take the casing off here. And you see the little mushroom where it overfilled a little bit. That part itself may form a little crust because it hardened on the hot surface but it's okay because when you break it open oh oh, oh gosh it's so beautiful so yeah I took a bite and I wanted you to see even with a fork how moist this cupcake is look at this look at this and it's not too moist because it won't stick but look at that all right so what red velvet cupcake is complete without cream cheese frosting so because this cupcake is so moist, I am going to do a whipped cream cheese frosting using the ingredients you see here. So we're gonna start with two blocks of eight ounce or 16 ounces of cream cheese. We want to continue with two sticks of unsalted butter. And I add one teaspoon of my homemade vanilla and I whip that girl up. Just, just let it whip, just let it do its thing. Then we wanna add one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. And I wanted to slow this down a little bit so that you guys can see. We want to whip this until your soft peaks form, but those peaks were a little too soft for me and I got tired of holding the bowl. So I said, all right, let's just keep on whipping. Whip, 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 until they get a little harder. Okay, so now we're gonna get my holy grail, which is my powdered sugar, my Domino powdered sugar. I use no other powdered sugar than Domino. And I really don't measure this. I just put the whole bag in there. So, <laughs> and it comes out perfect every single time. So, like you say, with my dry ingredients, I like to have it. I do not want this big poof cloud whenever I turn on my mixer. So, just throw the rest of that girl in there and just let it do its thing. Once it's finished, 
I'm going to fold in the whipping cream instead of mixing it just so I can make sure that it's stabilized and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison but look at how light and how airy it is even though it's light it still holds a great shape and it forms so that you don't have to worry about it falling over or it not being plausible enough for you to do anything with this when I tell you compliments this cupcake very well because it's not overpowering it's not too much cream cheese it's not too sweet it's perfect So the next step is optional, but what I like to do, I like to add pecans, pecans, pecans. I'm from the South. We say pecans. Um, we like to add pecans to our mix here. Now I feel, oh, maybe I should say pecans. But nonetheless, I don't think you can have a red velvet cake without pecans. And then I add my Southern or signature drizzle, which is only a melted candy wafer. And I love to get different flavors of that, like a candy wafer or a ganache. They're awesome. So I'm just gonna slow this down, just have one individual cupcake so you can just see exactly what we did here. And instead of the pecans, I just went for the drizzle and I put a cherry on top because it's just cute. And this is the original way that I normally do. Whipped cream, cream cheese, pecans, chocolate drizzle, take a bite, get a fork and guys seriously look at this bite look at this bite it gets no better than that well guys that's the end of my video it came so soon i had such a good time but i hope you enjoyed the red velvet cupcakes leave me a comment tell me how they came out for you i'll see you on the next video